<laughs> Hi, welcome to day two of Tabletop Simulator uh, Snake Oil with uh, Catsworth and Madison, who actually have uh, their names. Yeah. For once, it's um, not dog eggs and guess again, nerd. <laughs> and <laughs> what everyone I should is. fix that. And yes. Matt, Maddie has given us some beautiful table art, which I appreciate. Very nice. Thank you for that. Um, yeah. Let's go ahead and get started. Who wants to start us off as customer? Uh, I'll be a customer, I guess. So All right, go ahead and see what's going on. So take on. one card. Take one card, and you flip it over. Oh, uh, there we go. Yep. You are a college, college job. Job. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Mm. Yep. Make sure I shuffle these again, which I think is R. All right. Um, all right. Now we need to think of what are we going to try and say. That's worth the college dropout. Um, oh, I know already. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> For the record, I actually did finish college. <laughs> Same. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and make my cards bigger just to make it a little easier. All right. <clears throat> so, yeah, um, we usually go clockwise, which means I would go first on this. So Sounds good. I'm going to go ahead and intermission screen just so I know when to go. And then go ahead and right click on the clock and count me down and then give me the 90 seconds. Okay. I'm going to go three, two, one, go. Catsworth, so you dropped out of college. That's cool. <laughs> but let's face it, 99% of people drop out of college because of poor time management. And, like, it's a rough thing. You know, Catsworth, do you enjoy time management? Do you like managing your time? Hell no. No, Fuck no that. one does. So what we need is a change of heart and a change of mind to get you through this and to help you move on to a further, you know, a further stage in your life. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to give you a clock. Not a clock, though. <laughs> what we're going to give you is clock right. desire. I'm selling you... <laughs> A program that's going to make you way into clocks. You're going to have a blast. You're going to be managing the shit out of your time. Any point in time, you're going to look at this thing and you're just going to be like, damn, I really need to be doing X at Y time. You're going to be so efficient. Everyone's going to be looking up to you and being like, get ready to be Steve Jobs, motherfucker. He invented something that everyone carries around that's got a big ass clock on the front. Where do you think he got it? Clock desire. Be the next Steve Jobs. Clock desire. All right. All right. All right. It's pretty good. That's pretty good. And you can just right click and start the timer again the same way. You don't have to wait for time. All right. Matt, Matty, I believe right. it's your turn to, to try and win me over. Are you ready? I am ready. Three, two, one. Ignore that clock. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, Catsworth. You dropped out of college, and life's yep. really rough. And um, you got to find time between uh, watching anime a lot and uh, <laughs> eating chips and all that stuff. It's it's rough stuff. That's you got to find the, the point where you do your beauty sleep, really. And uh, I mean, people like Snuggies, but they're kind of a little too mainstream and they don't really fit your image too much because you really want to be like Bash the Stampede. He's your guy. <laughs> and oh, there's yeah. other guys, too, who are like really fashionable guys. <clears throat> you love those guys. So you want to be like them. Yeah. So you yeah. need your sleep. You need your sleep cape. <laughs> you, need, you need to sleep in style. And not this snuggy bullshit. It's, it's really lame, honestly. I don't like it at all. But the sleep cape, no one could really tell, ah, oh, this man sleeps in a cape. They look at that guy and go like, wow, he must be like a count or something. Maybe a marquee. But no, you're actually a college dropout. And you sleep uh, in the basement on a recliner. But uh, no one can tell. So sleep cape, you can buy it right now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, do, do I just just pick pick you a winner then? Which or? would you like to buy as a college dropout cat's worth uh, product? Jokes on you guys. I don't have any money. <laughs> 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 hey, 
Shut up, clock. Uh, I want I want them both. Can I get both, or do I have to pick one? <laughs> you have to pick one. You have to pick who to give the point. I'm sorry. I'm going. I'm going with Clock Desire. I gotta be the next Cat Jobs. This is it's for a, a wrestler in three, yeah. two, one. <laughs> Go for it. Okay, uh, Ty. You as a wrestler understand, of course, that an entrance is probably the most important thing to a wrestler. Always, uh, yeah. even if you even if you suck, it doesn't really matter. Even if you win, it doesn't matter. If the entrance is good, that's how you win the game. <laughs> uh, and how do you really set up from the crowd? How do you be unique? You do something really hardcore. I think um, just a regular old like entrance hallway is really boring. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of sucks, honestly. But if you have uh, a shank door, <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you walk through that shank door, and you enter the stage through the shank door, uh, you'll immediately be bloody. You look like you're a battle scarred warrior. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very important. And I mean, you bleed all over the ground. Uh, your opponent could trip on your blood. And really, what's more extreme than tripping on blood? So I believe the shank door is the best product that a wrestler could possibly have. And um, I think that's about it. Uh, if you're smart, you get the shank door. All right. <laughs> Thank you for your that's offer awesome. of the shank door. Shank door. Often known as a bleeding stab wound. All right, and let's go ahead and cats with. Are you ready? I'm. Um, I'm ready. Three, two, one. Get it. Well, hey there, Mr. Wrestler. Uh, you're not even just a regular wrestler. You're a fucking superstar. What's your favorite type of match? Cage match? Hell yeah, I love the cage match. You get in there, you go crazy, you fight dudes in a the cage. They can't even get away from you. You're going to beat the shit out of them. What happens after the match? You get all the honeys, the fly honeys, hopefully. But, you know, whatever. You get all you get all types. And then, then you know, sometimes, sometimes you bring them home. You, just, well, you know, just want to have a little fun. You know what to do? It's, dates going nice, you know. And then you get to the bedroom. You know what to do. You know, what, what, what? I'm not used to this. I want to go back in there. What's going on? What you need, my friend? Oops. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> it's a fuck cage. You bring them home and you bring them to the fuck cage. They can't. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's just you, it's just like home like what you're used to you gotta you do what you gotta do you pin them and you get the point the wrestle points you get those wrestle points <laughs> <laughs> all right that's it I, you can get a fuck cage <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> john cena wins by two wrestle points <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh. Well, <coughs> whew, that's a really tough decision. Those are both really good, but I kind of have to give it to the fuck cage. It's practical around <laughs> the, the fuck house. Cage. <laughs> the fuck cage. It's just smart. You ready right for this, Maddie? You ready right for my pitch? Uh, I, I guess I am. Um, <laughs> so you're ready then? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I got okay. this. Let's go. Three. Two, one, a go. Hey, so you like trees, right? What else do you like trees about? Like animals? You like animals? Animals and trees together like pasta and pizzoli. You yeah, know what else you got to get? Sometimes you're just walking, walking your animals and they get away from you because wild animals, you know, no big, whatever. But what if, what if they didn't? What if you could <laughs> keep track of your animals? What if you had oops, there we go. <laughs> A sheep leash. <laughs> this way, when, when you're walking your sheeps, all what is this bizarre all, product? All in your forest, you can keep track of them, and you got you got this leash. It's it's 100 biodegradable, friendly to all the trees and shit. And just this way, you're not gonna lose your sheep. Ain't no big bad wolves here. All right, that's that's all. <laughs> that's good. It's good. All right. I'm, <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready to kick ass. Yeah. And names. So, so can I just push play on the timer again? It'll start yeah. for the 90 yeah, seconds. Yeah, we'll start or... back over. Yep. <clears throat> okay. So three, two, one, go. As a tree hugger, what's the number one thing you have to do? That's right. Protect trees. 
So how do you do that? Somebody gets a bulldozer. They're driving it up to a tree. You know, they're probably going to knock the tree down. So you start your camp up in there. But what about the days where they just keep on driving through? What about those days? How do you get someone to stop driving a tractor into your tree? How do you keep them from chainsawing it down with you in them? Well, you can't operate a chainsaw or a bulldozer if you're crying, stupid. (laughs) <laughs> Got to make them tear up. How do you make them tear up? Well, that's easy. You just give a blow on the old tear whistle. You just blow the tear whistle, and they're just going to start crying. They're going to be in agony. Their life is going to suck a whole lot. You just keep hooting and hollering like the Anubis, telling them, you stay away from my tree. You stay off my tree, sir. And you just blow this whistle. They're going to start. You've heard of the brown note? Try the bluest of blue notes. The tear whistle they're gonna get depression that's my pitch oh, oh, no. depression like this oh. <clears throat> okay this is gonna be a tough one because i mean a sheep leash all around useful device um, many functions but then again to your whistle uh, I hate everyone, and I want to make them cry. Um, as a tree hugger, I only love the nature, and I hate the humans. So I do think that the, um, this particular prize has to go to uh, the tear whistle. That's, that's pretty good. Pretty oh. good. <laughs> there you go. I will accept my prize eventually. Uh, all right. Three, two, one, pitch. All right, Catsworth, you're a rapper. Yeah. What yeah. are you rolling in? Three things. Dough. Dough, ladies, yeah. and weed. Yeah. But most importantly, dough. <laughs> so yeah. here's the thing, though. So what do rappers love more than anything else? The redistribution of wealth, but not the normal way. <laughs> they do what we refer to as making it rain. And But here's the thing. Do you just want to stand at the top of a half pipe with ladies rolling around to the bottom, just throwing it out by hand like a chump? No. No. That's, and that's... everyone's done the money cannon at this point. You know, just, just taking it and just firing it out, getting those guns that shoot dollar bills. That's for suckers. You know what we're yeah. going to give you? You know what we're going to give you here for only yeah, $29.99? Start with the money, but check this shit out. <laughs> Hammer. You're just going to oh, slam yeah. that shit in the ground. Money is going to go everywhere. <laughs> Everyone is going to be blown away by your new hot methodology of making it rain. You make it rain while you make the earth rumble. It is amazing. <laughs> You're going to bring hammer time back to 2016. It is retro. It is fly as fuck. You're going to have a great time with your money hammer. (laughs) All right. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I think I'm I'm good for my presentation as well. (laughs) Please stop stop fingering my eyeballs. (laughs) Quit it. (laughs) <laughs> you ready? Okay, ready. Three, two, one, go. All right, Catsworth. Before you <laughs> become a really successful rapper, like before you start rolling in the dough and the weed and the women and the combination <laughs> of those three, there are many things that you have to check beforehand. Like, what, what do I do before I become successful? And the big thing that you need, no matter what you do in entertainment, you need a good image. Yeah, and a good image. Well, there are many things you could do for that, but uh, I'd say personally, the easiest uh, thing to do is just to look good. And I mean, of course, when you're successful, you you still want to keep you know uh, showing that successful image for everyone by looking good. And uh, what better way to check how you look personally? Uh, you need a mirror. What, what <laughs> yeah. kind of mirror? Because there's there's all kinds of you know generic mirrors, and those are really boring. And if you're like a rich guy, you have a mirror for every occasion, every little thing you need to check. So of course you need the pube mirror. <laughs> check how your pubes are. <laughs> Yes, who's gonna who's gonna look at the pubes in a regular old body mirror like a bathroom no mirror? You need the pube mirror to really see what your pubes look like. You gotta start those pubes. You gotta look good, even you know, down there in the nether region before you really get a rapper. So uh, you should buy a pube mirror today. Thanks. <laughs> All right, thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> oh, decisions. I I like the money hammer. 
but I think I, I think I gotta make sure I look fly everywhere. So I'm, I'm going with the pubic hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sell to a gynecologist in three, two, one, go for it. All right. So as a gynecologist, like even when you are a really practiced one, sometimes it's kind of, you know, when the patient is kind of embarrassed about it, you want to keep it uh, kind of as sterile and, and anonymous as you really can. But you really have to also make sure that the operation or like the checkup or whatever you're doing would, would still go well. So you need some sort of uh, piece of equipment that's really flexible, really suited for every type of situation in whether it be like your office or, I don't know, operating table, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think the most important piece of clothing is the headgear. Uh, and I, I believe I have it here. It's it's the head hood. <laughs> Not just any hood, but it's the head hood. <laughs> you see, you put it on your head instead of your hand, for instance. <laughs> so you can really have your face be in the shadows. So you don't really, no one really sees you while. You <laughs> yeah, that's it. I can't believe it. <laughs> I can't believe you'd fucking hood for gynecologist and use it for a head hood and not like the vagina hood. Well, what the hell is a hood going to go on if not a head? It's obvious. It it's for the a head. thing used for a, a hood. You could have done any kind of hood product. There. <laughs> no, that's not how you use a hood. Get it together, Ty. Oh, All right, well, Catsworth, are you ready? And hopefully you yep, I'm ready. know what a gynecologist is. All right, three, two, one, go. <laughs> All right, so what's the most important thing you need as a gynecologist? You need a pube mirror. Oh, wait, no, sorry, that's not my product. <laughs> <laughs> you got, you got, you got to keep it sterile in, in your office there, right? So it's, it's gonna be a little cold, right? Maybe you know, maybe 60, 40, 30, 20 degrees. I don't know what temperature is, but it's it's not gonna be, you know, it's gonna be a little chilly in there. So what you gotta do? You want to keep yourself warm. What kind of warm? Not the head. That's silly. Your head's got that <laughs> hair on it. What you need is something for your foots. You need some socks. And not just any kind of socks. All right, okay. Socks are expensive, right? Yeah. You're in there. You can maybe get some 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 uh, uh, little little scissors, trim trim them a little bit off your patients while you're down there. No big deal. You can make yourself some fur socks, <laughs> and, and then your feet will be nice and cold, and you won't get get sick while you're doing the giant stuff. The giant <laughs> stuff. How do we both get clothing? <laughs> And uh, I, I hope, I hope you enjoy your new socks at the end. <laughs> I can't believe you had hood and fur, and you both managed to beef it so hard. I'm kind of college. Look, look, we are really mature here. We don't do these kind of lowbrow jokes about vagina hoods or pube fur. I can't believe you. Oh, you could have done pube <laughs> if you had saved it. Oh gosh! Just, just doing giny stuff, you know. I, I guess we're really pushing footing around the subject. Oh my god! I don't even know. Like, I guess at least they're both awful. <laughs> Call a wash round. The, the, the head hood. What's wrong with that? <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't have anything I'll, better. I'll go ahead and go yeah. with fur socks. Fur socks. <laughs> At least he had like a, maybe you know to prevent certain varieties. I guess. Which one's going? Start first? us off, uh, Catsworth. Uh, yeah, All right, Catsworth. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. So you're five, five. You're in downtown Brooklyn. You gotta get on the houses and stuff. Get people, and there's the fire in there, right? What ha happens? You come up to their door. What's it got? It's got it's a fucking lock. You can't get in the house. You can't save the people. What are you gonna do? I got the thing for you. They got that door that ain't gonna open for you. You get this great product. It's the brick lock. 
It's like a brick, and you hit it against the lock, and it breaks open the lock, and now you save the people, and you're the big bear hero. Bada bing, bada boom, done. Big, big bear hero. <laughs> what was that? Brick lock. It's by Mattel. Is that your pitch? Yeah, that's my pitch. I am. Would you like to buy a brick? <laughs> <laughs> the thing you're describing is just a brick. Um, no, okay. but it says lock on it. Yeah, it's All just right. lock. It, it's All right, you ready to go? I, I'm fucking ready. All right, Let's do three, this. two, one. Sell it to me. All right, you're a firefighter. What? It, you're Correct. wearing all your gear, and all that gear has to keep everything out. You know, like you have to keep the fire out. You have to keep the heat out. You have to keep your the bad air out but you need to keep certain things in like your air unfortunately that like means me. other things are trapped inside there and what if you know like you're a man who's on call for emergencies right so you you have to try and be prepared but sometimes sometimes you can't you can't quite be 100% ready <laughs> let's say you've got a little something downstairs that you'd like to take care of but you don't have a way to get rid of it. Good news, buddy. We've got a shit orifice. You're going to be able... <laughs> this is beyond a butt flap. This is next level. This is going to be... It is a siphon. It'll pull it right out. Put it somewhere else. It's 100% hygienic. It'll clean it out immediately. Sometimes you just got to get the duty... Out quickly so you can get into the fire, get in, get out. If you need to use it in the middle of the run, just blame it on an animal. Say, like, oh, your dog got scared. It's fine. They'll never it's probably know. Get burned up anyway. Yeah, it'll get burned up along with the building if you have trouble. The shit orifice. So I have to choose between orifice and brick. <laughs> Which is the most original invention? <laughs> what to buy here on this table? <laughs> well, I mean, a brick is mighty tempting. I do love myself some bricks, but I believe that the orifice has won my heart today. <laughs> I, I I think that is very fair. <laughs> All right, count me down. This is a sport Three. mascot. Yep. Yep. Three, two, one. Bleep. All right, as a sport mascot, you're down on the floor a lot, and you're running around, yeah. you're getting people hyped, and you know how sometimes you have to interact with the marching band. You know, that's like a big part of what you do. The band is playing, <laughs> you're running around with them. What if someone in the group, particularly the drum major, you know how drum majors can kind of get full of themselves, right? Like oh, they can yeah. be They can be a little you know, presumptuous. What if the you know the drum major is starting to be a real shit and starts trying to bully you, trying to <laughs> trying maybe to like run his drums into you? Maybe he's starting to try and get other people to harass you, but you know you can't have like weapons, so he just starts being like, "Oops, sorry, running into you with all of our drums." <laughs> well, good news, drum shield, you're gonna be protected from every drum. They will never know what hit them. It detects drums automatically and will just pop out. And cover your booty so you can run around in your weird suit all day. No one will no one will be able to give you shit with your drum shield. You're protected. Fuck the drum major. <laughs> yeah, fuck those guys. Yeah. I hate them. I'm good. All right. <laughs> all right, I am ready as well. All right. Give it nine seconds and three, two, one, go. All right, so sports mascot, this is yeah. your career choice, really? You must be some sort of oh. deranged person or weirdo. <laughs> you lead a questionable life altogether. I don't really understand what drives you at all. But uh, when you're at home, you like to uh, enjoy time with your pets. And of course, since you're a sports <laughs> mascot, you're probably some sort of animal costume already. Which <laughs> wear every day. So you don't really want to get a conventional pet. You want something that's kind of kind of different than the usual pets so you you keep a bunch of pipes around you get, you keep pipes as pets you pet them you throw <laughs> some sticks at your pipes and you try to get in fetch but they don't really do that because they're lazy damn pipes you can't trust them but you have many pipes in your apartment and sometimes you're afraid what if your pipes run away 
what if your pipes escape this this life of weirdness that you keep leading every day? So you really need the pipe wire to uh, <laughs> keep these pipes in captivity as you uh, spend every day in this bumblebee costume that says the name of the local sports team on the back. So yeah, pipe wire for your pipes. Well... <laughs> <laughs> you upset the title. Oh, no! oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm there we to go. Fix it. Perfect. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm trying, trying to put it back. It. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Help. How <I'll> clock. <laughs> okay, you, you can w make your decision, Catsworth, while I attempt to. <laughs> well. I do like to keep my pipes clean, but but you did spend half of your pitch insulting me. Now I feel sad. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I and I do hate some drum mages, so I'm gonna I gotta go with the drum shield. Did you just say drum mages? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I hate drum mages. They keep casting drum bolts at me. <laughs> Oh, yeah, drum rolls. A, Ooh. That was a really annoying drum mages in my college. <laughs> A really stupid drum rogus. <laughs> drum show woman. <laughs> there we go. Battle drum. Battle drum, yeah. <laughs> All right. Pull that back up here. All right, oh, oh. this is for politician. Maddie, three, two, yes. one, sell it. All right, so politician. Of course, uh, yet another one of those occupations where an image is really important. You always got to keep buying some cool-looking new suits. You got to look, look successful and smart, like you know what you're doing, even though you really don't. But uh, uh, in addition to like a suit, what do you have? What do you carry all your documents in? You have, of course, a suitcase. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you need to adorn your suitcase as well. It's, it not, it's not just your corporeal form that has to look good. It's also the suitcase or the many suitcases that you own. So what you really need is um, some stickers. But what kind <laughs> of stickers would a politician put on his suitcase? I mean, it, it, it couldn't be like some sort of video game thing. No, no, no. It, would, it couldn't be just a praise. You need something really special to show that you're a shithead. Uh, a money sticker. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> you're a rich bastard and you take bribes every day. And people got to know, ah, that man is carrying some dirty money in his suitcase. He's got the money sticker on it. Nice. He's a politician. And everyone will know. So you should buy them. At least I'm on the up and up about my shitty attitude and behaviors. <laughs> That's fair. There's no fucking around. I'm like, does this guy take bribes? Fuck yeah, he does. All right. Cats <laughs> Three, All two, right, I'm ready. one, go for it. So yeah, speaking of, speaking of shitty behavior, and you know that's it's not your fault, man. Don't even worry about it. You got stressful job. You work crazy hours. You're busy all the time. You don't even get any time to yourself. That's right. You know sometimes sometimes you're just like, oh, I'm so stressed out. I just I just need a good wank. And, <laughs> but, but some, so you can't even find time for that you're so busy getting all these laws and running the country and shit well i got a new product for you don't you even worry I, you know sometimes you get those those you know little little mm -hmm. drugs and stuff too no like i ain't judging you man don't even worry about it this is gonna fit it's right in it's just what you're used to try out this thing you get the new wink needle you stab that into yourself and it'll, it'll, it'll feel like you had such the best wank of your life and you didn't even have to do nothing don't even worry about it you get yourself off in 10 seconds boom you're out of that bathroom no no questions by weird reporters you're done <laughs> get the wank needle <laughs> i have no interest in wank needles here you go <laughs> mr oh, <no>. money sticker <laughs> <laughs> I do not know how that is related to a politician, and I hope I never find out. <laughs> Let's do as Maddie. Go ahead. Well, give me give me my time. All right, and time begins in three, two, one, go. 
Hey, so you like clowns and shit? Wait, you are a clown. What am I talking about? You like you got <laughs> you're busy all the time. You're doing so many kids' birthday parties because you make like ten dollars. That sucks. How are you gonna pay for your rent? I don't know. That's your problem, not mine. Anyway, you are so tired. You can't even do anything like you want. But I got something for you. Something to make you help feel better about not being able to sleep ever. You scary ass fucking clown. The blanket <laughs> tattoo. You just look on your arm. You get your stuff one of these. You look at your arm, boom. It'll feel like you instantly had a nap. You ain't even going to feel tired. You don't have to worry about no stupid, smelly-ass kids. You're done. You look at the tattoo, gaze at it for like 20 seconds, and you'll feel rested and right as rain, and you can go back being a creepy-ass clown to the world. I hope you enjoy your blanket tattoo. All right, I'm ready. I wonder if blanket tattoos exist. Is there a person who has a blanket for a tattoo? Probably. All right, you are ready? Yeah. Okay, three, two, one, go. All right, so as a clown, um, you've gone through an extended bit of a you know academy training, and one of the biggest things they train you for at the academy is you have to wear makeup, right? Like, that's a big part of it. And if you're a really high-level yes. clown, which I can tell you are, sir, you're a big clown. You're a big fucking clown. Um, you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're exceedingly good at makeup and can wear all of it at all times. A big thing people don't realize is, and I'm sure you know this, you big fucking clown, Maddie, is that <laughs> clowns have to train to make sure they don't sweat all of their makeup off. Now, I know a big problem a lot, of, a lot of clowns have is that after the makeup is off and they reveal their Eldritchian forms, they still cannot <laughs> sweat successfully. And this is a big problem because your skin needs that. You're going to overheat when you don't have your makeup on. So how do we, do, how do we take care of this? Well, that's easy. It's artificial, but it's going to do it for you. This is what science has wrought over all these years. It's gum. What kind of gum? Sweat. Sweat gum. You're going to chew it, and it is just, you're going to pour sweat out. No problem. It's just very, very difficult to chew. Nothing gets a good sweat worked up for you, a clown, quite like sweat gum. It doesn't taste like sweat. That'd be the worst. It, we swear it does not taste like sweat. It just makes you sweat. It's very spicy gum. You're going to love it. It's going to clear up all your clown pores. The end. It's sweat gum. Uh, sweat gum. Um, interesting new invention uh, from the tech department of the Clown College that I enrolled in. Um, <laughs> the head researcher has clearly gone bonkers because it's, uh, it's pure insanity. But I do like the uh, the kid friendliness of the blanket tattoo. <laughs> I mean, I really want, I like tattoos a lot, and um, there are some that are just inappropriate. Like, I can't yeah. have a knife or like an intimidating dragon, but a blanket is just. Yeah. <laughs> nice and, uh, here you go. Thank you. <laughs> That's a nice tattoo for a clown to have. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That's perfect then. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Oh, Let's do this. <laughs> All right, Mr. Insomniac, you have problems so many you have problems sleeping what's That's true too what what is one of the biggest things that keeps people awake light not sleeping it's really yep. hard to fall asleep when there's light right and like <laughs> you go to your room and all your lights are on and you're an insomniac so you have hundreds of lights as you all know <laughs> all insomniacs have hundreds of lights this is a fact well known it, yeah it is so what do we need to deal with here? Well, you've got too many bulbs. You got a bulb oh, issue. Shit. You got all yeah. your bulbs. So bulb machine. Just get them all out of there. Get all your bulbs off at once. Hurry up with that shit. When you need to go to sleep, you need to go to sleep now. And that's when you just scream bulb machine and bam, everything is off. The house is free. It's yours. All right. The bulb machine. Fuck turning lights on with a switch. What are you, a chump? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, Maddie, you're up. Yes, I'm ready. Come on, click. There we go. All right. And go. 
Okay, Imsaniac. I'm I'm sure you know that Western medicine is it has completely failed you. It cannot cure you at all. I mean, it's basically completely useless. I mean, what does yep. curing uh, a cancer do? Nothing uh, horrible. <laughs> Cures every single disease on earth. Ah, that sucks. Western medicine sucks balls to be to be sure. And we at uh, Sham Incorporated, um, inventors <laughs> of such beautiful products as squashed tiger and uh, monkey squirtum hair. Uh, that cures many, pretty much everything. We have this new product that I think could help you out in, in your problem. And it's a severe problem indeed. Uh, we want you to, every day, take two glasses of worm secretion. <laughs> now, worm secretion has been proven to worm your the, its way into your brain. And just, you know, leave that nice sleep essence in there. Worms, you know, out of nature, sleep the most. Did you know that? If you cut a worm in half, they I both go to sleep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's just scientifically proven, even though science sucks. It's it's proven that worm secretion could really help you. <laughs> <with your problem. laughs> well, what do you think? I, I do like. I like them both. I do. I like I like the sound of the bulb machine, but I feel this the worm man is a scientist. <laughs> and scientists are proven to be t- to to help insomniacs. Uh-huh. Or so- <laughs> all right, all right, Mister Worm Secretion. <laughs> For a dumpster driver, which we have decided is a garbage man, because um. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Dumpster driver is a weird term. All right. Well, three, two, one, sell it. All right. So you're a dumpster driver in Yorkshire. Up in that's Smith. the only place where they call a garbage man a dumpster driver. Mm-hmm. The, mean, bin, so the bin really... handler, the, the trash <laughs> loryman. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I mean, it's not really a respected job, and it's not a well paying job, but it's a job that someone's got to do, and you're a brave man, so you're going to do it. And after like a really hard day of collecting people's garbage uh, out of their dumpsters and then driving the dumpsters away, you're going to want to relax when you get home. And I mean, you still kind of smell after the day. Even if you take (laughs) six showers, you still kind of smell of the dumpster. So you're going to need something that balances out both the soothing aroma and the the relaxation you want at home. So you're going to need a hammock to relax in. <laughs> but what kind of hammock would, would really offer both the good fun times plus the uh, nice tingling in your nose? A chocolate hammock, of, of course, is obviously <laughs> the, choice, the choice of every respectable dumpster driver. They just hop on, on into that uh, chocolate hammock. They could take a bite out of it and just munch on it for a while. Then just, uh, you know, close your eyes and relax. It's a good way to uh, get your load off. Uh, so you should buy one. Enjoy my time in a chocolate hammock. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. That's what I do. Chocolate hammock. That's me. I love a good hammock. Boy, me and me bin. Me go and drive the bin. Pick up the bin, me. Boy. Oh, bring me me chocolate day, Martha. hammock. Hey, Martha, it was a really tough day at the dumpster driving school today. I really had to teach these lads a lesson in dumpster driving. Got to relax a bit in my chocolate hammock. See you later. They kept saying I was supposed to call myself a binman, and I told them they're full of it. Oh, my God. Maddie, your English accent is almost as bad as your southern accent. It's really close. All right, Catsworth. How dare you? All right, I'm ready. So you're a, you're a dumpster driver, right? You gotta drive around all the town, get all the people's dumpsters, and you gotta collect all that trash in the givers. <laughs> you gotta make sure what's what's the most important thing. You don't forget nothing. You do. Your boss gonna yell at you. The people gonna yell at you. You don't want that happen. So you gotta make sure you got what you got good memory. What happens? You got if you miss even one trash can, that's bad. So I got a product just for you. What you gotta do is you got this this memory bat. 
and you hit yourself <laughs> with it. And don't make sure you're remembering the stuff. Now, what happens sometimes you don't remember too well. You get those all that crap you have put those. There's an old moldy chocolate hammock in the dumpster that you got to pick up. That's disgusting. No one wants to remember that. This works in reverse too. Hit yourself with it. Boom! Memory's gone. Now you only keep the good <laughs> stuff. Get rid of the bad. That's the memory bat. Just a good few whacks. <laughs> Dad. The key to any healthy human being is selective memory. I personally would like to forget all of this round that occurred. <laughs> memory bat. <laughs> there you go. Ah, shit. No, wait. It was second. I'm picking a different one. You want to go first, Ty, then? I can go for it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Time will begin in three, two, one, go. All right, you're a teen. Let's yeah. Let's get down to it. There's a lot of things that teens don't care about. There's a lot of things teens do care about. But I, for one, know from my personal experience, you're a teen. There's one thing all teens want to talk about but can't. Jacking it. So the thing is, though, is like Jack and it gets a little awkward because you don't want to you don't want to do too much of, you know, as we refer to it in hot wings and in Jack and it dry rub. You want to avoid as many dry rub situations as you can. You want to have a you want to go for the old wet ride. Well, the good news is I've got oil. I have oil. <laughs> don't mind the other one. <laughs> now, you might think, though, well, I don't want. I don't want to run out of oil, you know, because I jerk it a lot. I'm a teen. I'm full of hormones and, you know, piss and vinegar and cum and vinegar and cum and piss and cum. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Because so, you're going to have a whole lake of oil. Oh it's going to be enough oil. You will never run out of oil again. Let me emphasize this for you real quick. <laughs> we're talking more oil than a teen could possibly need it's you're going to be right. good for a while Tons. let's get the size here okay this is the teen how big is the lake you could how easily like? immerse yourself in the oil sir <laughs> jesus christ it's bigger than you that is pretty big and amazing oil like Oil. Make a fuck. By hats, bro. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, I'm ready. All right. All right, the timer <coughs> begins in three, two, one, go. As uh, as my, my colleague had pointed out, uh, you're a teenager, and sometimes you like jacking it. That's okay. <laughs> There's no shame in that. We all like exploring our bodies. It's natural. So, you know, sometimes, sometimes you have to even show off a little bit. Maybe you got a bigger wiener ding dong than your other friends. You don't know. You know how are you going to compare it? That's weird, right? You don't want to. You know, maybe, maybe you want to show off to a, gir a girly or a guy. No judgments that you spy. You know, hey, hey, look what I got. So this is what we do. Instead, none of that embarrassing shit. We're going to get yourself a fucking cock video. Boom. You said that shit out. <laughs> <laughs> and they they know exactly what they're up against. They can you know they can do the little thumbs up like that shit. Ignore it, whatever. Then then you'll know how they feel about it. None of that awkward interaction because you teens are fucking awkward as it is. We don't want to make you burst into flames or something. So Please get, like get and yourself subscribe. If you want more car video, like this send thing. it out to your friends, your enemies, whoever. Everyone's gonna love it. <laughs> Everyone's gotta get a piece of your yeah. cock. <laughs> A cock video. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a lot. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I like the idea of cock video. I am, uh, although I am a very, very uh, shy teenager. I really like to show my cock or my face. I'm a really shy boy. Uh, and I mean, I'm a teenager, so I'm a moron. So of course, I, I do like quantity over quality. And there was a lot of oil in that lake. So, <laughs> so here you go, buddy. Thanks. I like selling oil to. <laughs> yeah, I'm an oil baron. Really? Yep. Whole lakes of it, baby. <laughs> All right, Catsworth, the teacher. Yeah. Are you ready to be wild? Because I'm ready. I'm ready. ready. I got you. I 
I want you to wow me. Mm-hmm. You wow the shit out of me. You got 90 seconds. Let's do this. All right. Boop. All right, Casper. <laughs> so you're a teacher, and there's, yeah. what's the thing that is going to distract your students more than anything else? It's Oops. Sex. It's sex, man. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. sex. Like, that's the thing. So here's the thing. We want to make sure that our sex education is good. But the thing is, it's hard. You can't just like out and out ask a student, you know, to talk about it. It's hard to set yeah. that up. It's hard to set up that kind of discussion. So the question is, how do you know what students to talk to? What students need to have the discussion? You know, how do you know? Well, the thing is, it's a little hard, but you can catch them when they, what do teens need to do a fuck? I don't know. Uh, so yeah, how, do you, that's important. how do you know if one of your students is, is going for condoms? Well, how, how, how are you aware? Well, a condom trap. They'll never know what hit them. You're gonna <laughs> Everyone will. You're just as soon as they touch that condom trap, we woo, we woo. You know what's going on. You know yeah. what's going to happen. You're aware, and that's information is power, especially for a teacher like yourself. So let's just, let's have a heart to heart with a condom trap. All right, all right. <laughs> and this time, Mr. Maddie, what, what did you bring to the table? Metaphorically right, I, I'm, I'm and ready. realistically. <laughs> I, I'm ready. All right. You got 90 <laughs> seconds. Let's do this. All right, Catsworth, you're a teacher, am I right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you, do you teach chemistry by any chance? Physics? Sure. Like I, I teach everything. That's good. That's good because I have <laughs> just like the perfect product. Um, as you might know, certain kids they're just not enthralled with with these two subjects. They find them kind of nerdy and boring. Yeah. And what you what you need to do to kind of uh, get their attention is kind of show off, you know, the the cool stuff there is in physics. Like do some really sort of neat tricks with with fire because everyone yeah. likes fire. Fire is really cool. Fire's so fire. Great. You need fire, but. You know, the kind of thing with, with your uh, basic default fire, your storeboard fire. It's got it's, this one one little problem. It's it's really heavy. Yeah, so it is it's some light fire. <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I can carry you're, so you're, much you're more gonna, of that. You're going to get so tired dealing with all that fire. It's so heavy. But when you buy my light fire... <laughs> You'll notice that you won't be encumbered at all by my light fire. I can even fast travel. You should buy it and fit it into your uh, fucking whatever curriculum right now today. (laughs) Thank you, sir. Light, light fire sounds good, but I mean, sex ed, that's no, that's no laughing matter. That's, we gotta get the condom trap. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get, we gotta stop it before it starts. All right. Well, let's and then, get, and then let it, <laughs> let's go ahead and do our quick, uh, totaling here for game one before we do our, uh, short break. So that I'm I can at four. use the restroom. Uh, I need to gather my cards real quick. So I, can tell you. I am at six. I'm at three. Oh. <laughs> All right. If it makes you feel better, even if I would have gave you that one, Ty still would have beat us both. <laughs> I come up with good ideas like condom traps. <laughs> that's, that's you know how idea. it is. <laughs> All right. Well, quick break while I do a piss. Um, uh, and everyone else, just go ahead and group up your current cards. Oh, well, there they go. That, the way I was imagining it was more of a. Like what, what do they call them? The Chinese finger traps. <laughs> 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 